Hello everybody and welcome to the preview show for Bristol Rovers Away. In today's show we bring you the posh perspective, the Bristol Rovers perspective from Neil from the Talking Gas podcast, a very special Peterborough United version of Tenable. We've been away for a while but we're back and better than ever on today's pre-match posh. Just a reminder that we are partnered with PUFC Stickers. Use code BOMM5 at checkout for a 5% discount of all your stickers' orders. So let's look forward to the game from the posh point of view. Max, obviously, automatics aren't looking likely. How much would you rotate the squad for Saturday's game? Yeah, so obviously Derby, um, uh, they got to lose both their games for it to be mathematically possible. I think one win puts them in the clear. Uh, with two games left, even with our game in hand, so um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be difficult. I don't think we'll do it now. Rotation wise, we've secured a playoff space. I'm not risking any injuries now. I'd even bring players like a Brian Brady, um, Adaroju, Mills, Dornelli, um, Manny Fernandez, Critchlow, who haven't had many minutes this season. We keep our main core um, together. Will we? Do you think be smart with the playoff spot and try and, you know, drop points if that means we get an easier game? Or do you think we should just go out and try and win every game and just see who we get in the playoffs? Well, of course, you've got to try and win every game. Um, I would much rather finish fourth than third, um, in all honesty, because um, whoever finishes sixth, Lincoln or Oxford, they've both built a lot of momentum um, towards the end of the season, whereas Barnsley haven't really. So I think um, Barn- Barnsley won't be as challenging. Of course, it'll still be tough um, and hopefully we're up for the challenge. But yeah, let's hope, we, um, let's hope we're ready for it. We'll just actually talk briefly about strikers, obviously. Do you think Posh have managed to find their best striker before the playoffs yet? And do you reckon we should just be going, you know, Ricky J. Jones will play him in the playoffs? Or do you think that place is still up for grabs with both Malik and Jono as well, Matt? Uh, yeah, we found our best striker, but we haven't played him all season. Uh, he's been back-to-back golden boot winners for, for Posh. Um, and because he doesn't fit our system, we haven't played him. I, lo- I love Jono and I play him to the playoffs now and then really let him hit some form, hit, hit, hit a vein of form. And if we've got to go with Ricky or Malik and John doesn't take off like I think he will, um, by all means. But I don't think you can drop him if that's the question that you're sort of insinuating. You can't drop him after that performance at Fleetwood. He's got to start against Bristol Rovers. And finally, we'll do our score prediction. So, Max, what is your score prediction for Posh versus Bristol Rovers at the weekend? I'm going to go 2-1 Posh. And I'm going to go Johnson Clark Harris, first goal scorer. I'm going to say... Um... A one all draw, uh, being quite negative, I guess, but I think it's reasonable. And I'm going to go with Clark Harris as the first goal scorer. Personally, I think it's going to be 1 0 posh, and I reckon David Adjaboy will score the goal to get posh the win. So it's time to move on to the game section, and we're doing tenable this week. We have to name 10 players that fit into a category, I say. So, Caden, can you name me? Any of the last 10 players that have scored for Peterborough United against Bristol Rovers. The, this goes back to 2018, August of 2018, to the start of the 18 to 19 season. You have three lives. So, yeah, let's, let's name any, any of the 10. And I will say a lot of the people you'd expect to be in there are in there. OK, I'm going to start off with August 2018. And that was the first game of the season against Bristol Rovers. It was a 2-1 win. And Matt Godden scored the opener. And then oh, who scored the second? This isn't this isn't one of my answers, but I'm thinking Jason Cummins. No, no, it wasn't. It was O'Hara. O'Hara. Is that your guess? Yeah. O'Hara yeah. is tenable. Well done. You've got the two oldest on the list. Oh, when when did we play them in that second half? I really can't remember. I've got to check out some names. Um, Dembele. Dembele is not tenable. That's one of the I've gone. Right, I'll, I'll skip. I'll skip that season. Uh, the, the second. I would have started recent and gone back because you get more points for. You yeah, get true. points for the ones no, that we. No, I, I'm doing it this way. I'm gonna. Randall. Randall is not tenable. He's got one life left. Randall is tenable. Randall is not tenable. 
I'll let you know when we've played them. Obviously, we've played them this season. Surely you remember who scored. Um, and then we played them in the FA Cup when we were in the Championship, if you remember. Yeah. 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 Sammy Smodix. Sammy Smodix is tenable. You're on three. That was a 2 1 win. I don't know who scored that. It was his <laughs> debut. Up. Oh, Mumba. Yes, there we go. Valley Mumba. Um, right. You've got four out of ten, but you've only got one life left, so be careful with your guesses. Wait, so if I Can lose you... this life, I'm, it's over. It's over. Can you not remember who scored this season? I was a very happy bunny. Adjo Boy. Adjo Boy did score this season. Oh, I can't. Um... I really want to say Ricky. I'll go Ricky. You'll go Ricky. It's wrong, isn't it? You're wrong, Caden. Unfortunately, <clears throat> there's your three lives gone. Right, here are some some notable ones that I thought you would have got. Joe Ward scored against them. Ivan Tony, obviously. Ivan Tony's a big yeah. one. Um, Dan Butler scored. That would have been a very obscure one for you to know. Jack Taylor. And then the other Ooh. goal scorer this season was Archie Collins. Um, there we go, Caden. So you've got five out of ten which you know it's a decent effort right in the middle we'll see if max can beat you in his go but we'll now hand over to me again i interviewed neil from talking gas podcast and got the bristol rovers perspective ahead of the game first of all neil uh let's start by asking what, what's the general mood around the memorial stadium right now w what are we going into on saturday pretty deflated really i think the season as a whole it um it showed signs of um promise in the summer obviously it's 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 gone full circle obviously we had joey to start with um new ownership um big budget he attracted some what we consider to be pretty big name players for the level and to come to bristol rovers as he did in league two and um, we were looking to obviously make a make a push into that in and towards the top six taylor's came in he's a, he's acquired a squad that's very pro and partisan the old regime hasn't really got them on side and we've tailed off really and it's we, we've gone out with a whimper to be honest so um yeah pretty deflated we showed we we, we had we had some relatively big expectations in the summer to make a push we, no one was ever saying we'd make top six but we'd like to be in with a shout of it and we've come nowhere close yeah so in terms of your sort of style of play under taylor obviously it was relatively clear what that was under barton but what mm -hmm. can posh expect to come up against on saturday for recent weeks, apart from the sort of last couple of games, um, we've not seen anything really as far as attitude, application, um, endeavour. They, they just look like they've, they, they, they've shown no interest, basically. In if you look at the relationship between players and manager, there's nothing there. Over the past couple of games, we've been blessed to have someone like Jordan Rosser, who's been out for ages, been out for over a year, I think. And... Um, He's our pace setter now, basically. He goes in there and he dictates and he, and he sets the mood off. He can only get through 45 minutes, 50, an hour tops. But what he does is he sets the tone for us and then other players can carry that on. So we've seen significant improvement in that in the last couple of games with two back-to-back -back victories. But that's I purely put that down to Jordan Ross uh, being the character and the player he is. Um, as far as style of play, it is night and day to compared to what? We add under Joey. Um, we sacrifice a lot of possession. We're quite happy to not have the ball and we'll sacrifice a lot of the ball purely to have shape and a bit of structure. We're putting pieces together to stop the rot before, you know, the final game of the season. So we're not as bad as we have been, but we're far from perfect. Before the game, obviously, who is the posh player that you guys look at and think, you know, he could cause us some big problems on Saturday if you were to pick one? Um, I think you've got... You've got a multitude of key assets, really, compared to obviously our squad. Edwards is a is an obvious one. He's got to be probably the most valuable centre half in the division, if not the most valuable player in the division. Um, you can go right through the spine of your side. Cipriano is a fantastic player. I think for me, Mason Clark's just a real handful, a real handful. Um, but I could go through all of those. You've seen what Burroughs can do. He's done it at Wembley. If you run it, Bristol Rovers, you'll 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 get a bit of success. Yeah, uh, and finally, Neil, we always ask, what is your score prediction for Saturday's game? I just think you'll have too much for us at the top end of the pitch. Um, I can see it being, I can see us getting beat 3-1, considering you've got plenty to play for, you know. I think you'll have too much for us, yeah. I expect you, yeah, 3-1, posh. 
lastly, where can we find you if we want to listen to the Bristol Rovers side of things? If our listeners, where can we we find you guys? Yeah, um, Talking Gas podcast. Um, if you go over to obviously Charlie, he holds all the um, all the links and all the pages, etc. So um, just go and look for that. Brilliant. Thank you, Neil. No sweat. Cheers. Okay, so it's time for round two of Peterborough United Tenable. Max is our competitor this time. So Posh currently sit joint tenth on clean sheets in League One. I want you to name me as many of the current top ten in clean sheets in League One as you can. Right, well, I think clean sheets wise, Lincoln and Portsmouth are both up there. Those are both tenable answers. Okay. I think I'll go Oxford next. They could be up there. You have lost a life. Oxford oh. are not tenable, unfortunately, Max. Okay. Derby haven't lost by many margin uh, by many steep margins this season, I don't think. Um but clean sheets wise, I think they do concede a lot. Orient isn't a bad shout. Yeah. But it's too risky. Are you placing any of these guesses, by the way? Or are you no, just... I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But I've got to rattle some off them. Right, we'll go Derby. Derby is tenable. Right, okay. And then we will go. Um we'll go we will go well, we will go to we'll go to Bolton next. We'll do some safe guesses. Bolton are tenable as well. Okay, we'll go and then we will go to I don't think Barnsley are up there. They just concede all the time. Um, I'll come back to Barnsley at the end. Right, I'm going to go Leighton Orient. Okay, why not? Leighton Orient are tenable. Get in. Right, okay, so that's five. So I'm joint with Caden, that's fine. Let's go Let's go Northampton. I might be wrong. Northampton are not tenable. Okay, that's fine. Um, we will, okay, well, I think the safe option here then is to go to Barnsley to beat Caden. So we'll do Barnsley. They are not tenable. Okay, well, we joined with Cadence, that's fine. So, who the other five then must be? So, you've got uh, Stevenage, you've got oh, Blackpool, Wigan, Exeter, and Wickham are your are your remaining ten. Joint with Caden, I can't complain. Yeah, it, it's a draw. So, you've got five each. You both lost all your lives. Um, that brings tenable to an end. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you guys for watching the video as a whole as well. Let us know what you guys thought of the new format, uh, the longer pre-match posh with the opposition fan views, some games, and then our views as well. Let us know your score predictions as well in the comments below. And also, if you played along with any of the Tenable games, let us know how you did. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next pre-match posh.